of times, low back pain is generated by the bones being jammed upwards here, or there's pressure in the very center. And this would be pain in the small of the back right here as the as the belt line comes across right there in the small of the back, you have kind of an achiness or even sharp pains in there. So what we, what we would want to do first, of course, would be to adjust that joint or get it moving, restore the normal joint biomechanics and movement. And so as, since we've got too much compression there, we want to take the arthro stem here, adjust upwards, and then we come downwards while we apply a traction force here open it up here. Once that, once that joint motion is restored, the second thing that I like to do is take the vertebral distraction pump, which does a little opening. We actually can open those joints up with the pump there. And so after we've mobilized the joint or got the, got the bone moving better, we can come in here and apply some distraction. We'll put the patient in a slight flexion, but we come in here and we can open those joints up. And when that does that, we restore the motion and the ability of the, restore the flexibility in these joints, and it's and it relieves that aching, boring pain that ha that that comes from injuries to that area. So those are just a couple of the ways that we can work on your lower back pain if you're having it. Feel free to give us a call. I'm Dr. Owens, chiropractic. How long it takes usually before someone notices that, uh, you know, their back pain's diminished and, you know, they're able to function properly in life? Right. Uh, well, proper function in life can sometimes take a while. That's, that's a matter of getting the, the ligaments and muscles strengthened up around the in injury site. Uh, for example, let's say a low back pain, it, that can sometimes take a little while to restore full function. However, pain relief sometimes, uh, sometimes occurs after the very first visit. Uh, typically, a patient will have some relief after their first visit and a large amount of relief after uh, five to seven visits. Okay, that makes sense. Over a, uh, one of the ways that we can work on someone with low back pain. If we uh, look at the spine here, uh, this would be looking at somebody from behind. I'm going to set the spine down here on the table. Sometimes folks have pain in the side of the lower back, not dead in the middle, but off to the side. And that is pain generated from the SI joint or sacroiliac joint. And so how we work on that, we have to restore the motion of that joint. And a great tool to use is the arthro stem. And what we do is we just palpate or feel to see which is moving and which is not. And we find the areas that are stuck and we just want to restore that motion. As we restore the motion, the body then restores that nervous input from the joint up to the brain so that it moves normally and feels a lot better. So that's one of the ways we can work on SI joint pain or low back pain that's off on the office. One of the ways we use to rehabilitate lower backs is a device called the wobble chair. And the wobble chair has, it's meant to bend and flex and move back and forth. One of the, one of the characteristics of discs is that to remain healthy, these are filled with water on a healthy disc. They need to flex and move. And with this movement, it brings water and helps the disc stay healthy. The water is pulled in. So, Dr. Pettibon invented the wobble chair. And in order to simulate that movement, and all you do is you get on it and you spend five to ten minutes wobbling on the chair, making the chair move back and forth, forward and backwards. As it moves forward and backwards, pulling nice, healthy nutrients into the disc, pumping waste products out. And a lot of patients really love this. And you just get on the chair and you work it, you work circles, and it's super effective for maintaining a young healthy discs for a long healthy life. I'm going to show you a quick stretch for the hip that you can do at work while you're sitting. Maybe you're sitting at the computer and need to take a little study break. This will keep some of the pressure off the hips, allow them to be more mobile.
also alleviating the low back pain. When you, when, you, when you do this stretch, you just spread the legs apart, lower legs parallel, and you're going to just pulse forward. Keep the lower back nice and straight, and you're just going to pulse in. Pulse in with the stretch. You'll feel the stretch, and then you relax. Pulse in, you'll feel the stretch, and relax. You put slight pressure out on your knees. Do this 12, 15 times. You can do it 3 to 4 times a day if you like. Be great for the hip joint capsules and low back. When I'm sitting, I feel tight, especially in my lower back. Well, let me give you a quick exercise to help that. that you can do alternately throughout the day, every hour or so, every two hours. It's a stretch for the hips and the glutes. And the glutes and the piriformis muscle, all this musculature here gets tight and it compresses on the sciatic nerve. Quick way to handle that while you're sitting at work, and maybe you can't take a long stretch break, but you need to take a quick break, arch your... Uh, Put your leg up here on your knee, and keep your back nice and straight. You'll already feel it. Some of you may already feel it starting to stretch. I feel it too, just a little. And the, the part of the stretch that you want to do is you arch forward. As you arch forward, you'll feel those hips and glutes start to pull. That's the stretch. We want to do it not in the static hold stretch where you hold it for a long period of time, but just the pulsing. So you want to go in for one second and relax. Go in for one second and relax. You can also arch down and reach towards the floor with this stretch as well. As you do this, you'll find that it, as you do it with a, each one second, one second stretch, if you fully relax that muscle, one second stretch, you'll find that it gets more flexible. There'll be a lot less scar tissue and pain in your hips and lower back at the end of the day. And why I shouldn't take pain medication for back pain as a, you know, is there any downside to that? The... The pain medication that you take over the counter is uh, what's called a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Those are safe if you use them very short periods of time if the pain is, is very severe. I always say stay away from them if you can because these inhibit inflammation. Inflammation is the first step of the healing cascade. So in other words, that starts the healing process. You don't want to stop that right at the beginning. You want your body to to heal itself. That's what it's designed to do. Second thing pain medication can do is give you a false sense of security. In other words, you feel like you're doing better and you go out and re-injure yourself that much easier. So I recommend against pain medication in a lot of cases um, for the very reason that of those things. Now, I, as a chiropractor, I can't recommend a patient take drugs or not take drugs. It's not in the scope of my practice. For further consultation, of course, see your medical doctor. Uh, why do children have back pain, and, and what what is it a symptom of? Uh, children very often have back pain. They don't always know how to communicate it. Um, they Children have back pain because they, they have falls. Uh, any of you parents out there with kids know that uh, the kids fall off the slides, they fall off their bikes. All of these jolts to the body produce little, little impacts that cause misalignments of the bone. So these bones get jammed and they just get jammed a little bit and kids are real flexible so they sometimes don't notice it. Uh, but then it gets a little worse and a little worse and a little worse. Kids fall hundreds and hundreds of times before they grow up. Uh, but it's a symptom of a spinal problem. It usually when, when, a, when a child has back pain, it's a symptom of a spinal problem, and that's what uh, we work with. Can my work environment be affecting my back pain at all? Uh, absolutely. Work environments can vary, of course. Um, the one we see here in Bellevue a lot, uh, being close to Microsoft, is the uh, computer posture, where someone is here or looking into the computer all day, the head goes forward, they're sitting all day, and they never move. Uh, that creates a pretty, pretty uh, standard pain here in the shoulder blades uh, in, in back, um, upper back kind of uh, naggy pain that's always there. Uh, and then, of course, they go back to work the next day, and it's there again. So that's very correctable. Uh, as far as other work environments, um, if someone is, uh, you know, any repetitive motion with limited ranges can cause back pain. And our, our, our job really at that point is to address how to how to get them doing other things during the rest of the day. For the computer guys, we might have them stretch their pecs backwards a lot of times during the day because we have to move our body in all directions for it to be pain-free. Okay.
Uh, Dr. Owens, I was wondering uh, what treatment options out, are out there that I should consider for back pain? Or a lot of people come to me after they've been to their medical doctor, their, the physical therapist, and, and those, those treatments haven't worked. Um, those are certainly options. However, uh, with a chiropractor, we try to get to the root cause of the, of the, of the pain, which is usually a bone that has some form of, of, of dysfunction. In other words, it's not working correctly. With a chiropractic adjustment, we will locate areas of the spine that are very stiff, that aren't moving correctly, or maybe jammed out of position. And the job is to get them functioning again so that they can flex, so they can move. Physical therapy does not the best. Uh, so chiropractic is a great choice. Uh, after that, after we restore, after we do restore the joint dysfunction, physical therapy p- can be a great option because they're going to do some strengthening exercises. You'll learn that's really what they're they're really uh, they're really trained for is the strengthening and rehabilitation of stuff. But you can't do that over top of joint dysfunction, and so that's where chiropractic comes in. I think what can I do to prevent back pain from uh, returning after I've had a few chiropractic visits, I'm feeling good, you know, what, what can I do to prevent, prevent it from coming back? Right. Um, very important question. Uh, I get it a lot. People ask me, what can I do myself uh, to, keep this, to keep this thing at bay or to keep it from coming back? And it almost always boils down to uh, being active, doing, doing uh, stretching, strengthening uh, exercises and things like this. Oddly enough, I'll, I'll give exercises to a lot of people, but it's it's a uh, it's a precious few that actually go and do them. But the ones that do them do find that they they have much less pain. Uh, I will during the course of the care, I will give lots of exercises and stretches for you to do. Hey, Doctor Owens, I'm just wondering what can be done about pregnancy. You know, back pain which occurs uh, during pregnancy, post pregnancy. During pregnancy, there's a lot of extra stresses placed on the body. Due to the fact that there's a baby carrying it up here, it tends to throw or pull the pelvis forward, which then causes too much curvature in the back and pinching of the nerves. Well, when that occurs, how we work with that is that we will, we can get in there and use it with very light techniques in order to open the space back up so that that compression on those nerves is gone, allowing allowing pain relief to occur and the muscles to relax um, and, and, and it helps a lot. Preg- giving pregnant ladies a lot of relief um, is, is something that uh, that's a very cool thing to see. Uh, after pregnancy we get into a fact where the body's had a stress, had the stress of childbirth and that can cause any number of things um, from the force of contractions on the body can cause bones to misalign can cause pressure on nerves and cause even minor pulls, tears, injuries. Uh, these can these are usually always different from person to person, uh, but we can always help uh, find it, finding where they are and helping alleviate the uh, the injuries. Oh. Sometimes uh, nausea and back pain are totally you know come together, like when um, someone's pregnant, where they get nauseous as well as have back pain. Right, Les. Um, well. Pregnancy or no pregnancy, with back pain and nausea, the nerves that exit the back here go around, sometimes around the rib cage, sometimes through, but they go, do feed and tie into the stomach. And so we do have the nerves from the back controlling the viscera. The stomach, the the uh, the small intestines, the large intestines. So, with that tie-in occurring, if you have a nerve affected here in the back, it can cause things to happen up front. Hmm. Um, regular chiropractic adjustments always play in uh, into the mix because the uh, bones of the back can get jammed, and chiropractic is the only thing that can unjam those. Uh, the second thing you have to do to maintain back pain is do some regular form of exercise, both resistance training and aerobic type exercise. Aerobic is about 30, time, 30 minutes a week, uh, 30 minutes a day, three times a week, and uh, weightlifting 20 to 30 minutes a day, three times a week would probably do it. Um, follow
Why does one get back pain during pregnancy? What causes it? Uh, back pain during pregnancy is caused by excessive forward shift of uh, the uh, of, of the pelvis as the weight transfers from the front, and this is a weight that the lady's typically not used to having. It alters everything and jams nerves in the lower back, causing pain and spasm. Wondering what causes back pain in in uh, the like the right side of your lower back. Oh, uh, to to do that, let me, let's go into this other room where I have the spine, and I'll show you. Okay. People complain. They say sometimes it's hip pain, or sometimes it's uh, or, or low back pain, and you have to isolate it. And there's a joint here called the sacroiliac joint. It comes from sacrum and ilium. There's a ligament in between here that gets very tender when the pelvis shifts out of place. Hmm. So in, with, uh, with the way I treat that, we adjust the, adjust the area and then we also work the ligament uh, to restore the proper function uh, and nerve flow into that area. Okay. Would that be the same for the other side if you had it on the could lower be. left side? Mm -hmm. or, okay. It could be either side. If it's on the right side here uh, or right side there, or, or left side over here, you would have this, a similar. You could have a similar problem, or it could be tender on both, and they both need help, uh, as differentiated from the problem in the middle, which creates a different set of symptoms. Doctor Owens, I was wondering uh, what causes uh, back pain. You know, like in my rib cage area. Okay. Um, well, as as you may or may not know, the ribs extend from the back part. Hopefully, they attach to the spine in the back. They form a cage and they go around to the front. And when we breathe, the ribs expand and contract in kind of a bucket handle motion. If a rib is twisted or torqued, it will put pressure on the nerve that runs directly underneath it, causing an extremely sharp pain, and that can be corrected with chiropractic. Hey everyone, Dr. Owens, Chiropractic of Bellevue. Welcome to our new office. Uh, today I wanted to go over with you a typical office visit, uh, which is a treatment that we do every day, the checks that we go through, what we look for, what we correct on the the, uh, the spines to help the people's health every single day. So today we're going to use Kate as uh, as our uh, model, and she's going to help us uh, demonstrate this whole thing. So Kate, uh, let's have you start out face up on your back. Now typically we'll start out face up on the back because I, I need to address the, the cervical region or the neck. So as we check through the neck, the main thing I'm looking for, as we've talked about in my other visits, is both misalignment but also the ability of the spine to move freely. The free motion of the spine, every bone of the spine that's essential for health and nerves and nerve health in the area. So as we check, we see that there's some slight uh, fixations and bones out of place in our lower neck, so we're going to go ahead and correct those. We wouldn't necessarily use this on this manipulation on kids or elderly people, uh, but for someone like Kate, it's perfect because we're able to restore that little bit of motion in there. And we do the same thing, that lower neck here. Good. Excellent. And we'll come back to that in a little while with the instrument to just fully restore it. But I found that using the manual adjustment first really gets the big problems out of the way and then we're, we're able to fine tune it with the instrument later. So we found a misalignment in her middle back here. And we're just going to free up the motion in that area. Now we're going to check her lower back. Turn towards me and you're like, okay. So as, as we go through systematically the this, this spine, there may be other problems that need, that take precedent, but on, on average, I'm going to check things in this order. You can see with my hands, I'm motioning the spine. I'm using her hips to motion the spine to feel what's moving and what's not moving and what's jammed. Kate has a, a bone that's jammed in the upper lumbar area, so I'm going to contact this. Do a, just a little correction there. Okay, Kate, let's go on your stomach, face down. Now, typically, after the, we, we check the main areas, there's some fine-tuning that needs to happen. And for that, I use the Arthur Stem. You may have seen the Arthur Stem on my other videos. 
just a tapping instrument that introduces motion into the spine. So we're going to just work the spine. Kate has a has an older injury down here in the lumbosacral region, so we're going to just free this up. And I free it up until I start to feel that nice springy function. That tells me that we've introduced all the new motion that we can, and the body has to go. You know, the body has to do it, the healing process after that. Ultimately, what we're doing is we're freeing up what motion we can for the day. And then the body, the, the, the patient has to go home and the body will start to reconstruct the area and, and do the healing. The healing takes place at home in between visits. Almost like when you're working out at the gym. You don't get bigger and stronger while you're working out. You get bigger and stronger after your body heals from the workout. Okay. There's an area in case mid-back that we're going to touch up. Right here. This is a, an adjustment that actually does help restore the cervical curve. Many of you that have seen chiropractors before maybe have x rays where your the normal healthy curve of the neck has been lost. This helps restore that, or at least the function of that area, so that you then don't go on to develop the arthritis that comes from having bones that are being stuck in the same place and not moving. So, again, our whole goal is to restore the function and motion of the spine. A healthy, movable spine does not develop arthritis. A healthy, movable body does not get sick. So, this is a very gentle rib adjustment that I've been working with and developed to kind of allow the rib cage to move so that full breathing can occur. Energy levels improve when the when the breathing occurs normally. Lots a lot happening during a real typical office visit. A lot that we decided to include in our just routine protocol, mainly because it, these are the things that, due to the stresses that we're experiencing in life, the body needs. So we we'll just continue to work that out until we feel that nice springy motion where it was really tight before. touch up there. Now, at that point, Kate normally does this. We've restored all the motion and function into the spine that we can for that day. Now I like to just do use a device called the Genie Rub or the Master Massager. And what we're doing at this point is putting vibration into the spine. It's taking the areas of correction that we've done and we're like enforcing it. We're putting the shellac on it, so to speak. So we're waking, wakening up the whole body, enhancing all those nerve impulses so that healing occurs that much faster. It also can remove any residual soreness that may exist. So this is normally the part that my assistant Kate, who I'm working on, she'll normally be doing this part of the uh, of the treatment with you. And uh, quite frankly, it tends to be the, the part of the treatment that people like the most. So don't worry, we won't uh, we won't skip you on this process. If you're if you're in here for the treatment, this is included every single time. So. Make sure we get all those muscles down the side, the rib cage there. Good, good, good. All right, Miss Kate, you're all done. And that's our typical office visit here at Chiropractic of Bellevue. I'm glad you could uh, stop by with us at least virtually today, and we'd love to see you here in the office in the future. Again, our number is 425-802-5432. Give us a call. We'd love to see you.